over to Tonk and Sale, she'll carry the best equipped expedition I've ever sent out. Best trade goods, best guns and ammunition, and if I may say so, the two best fur traders in Canada. <laughs> I will no be disputing that. No, no. no. <laughs> now, this is the most important venture I've ever financed. And that's why I'm sending with you the ablest man in my employ, capable of handling any emergency. That coming from you is praise indeed. Oh, you could I be depended upon to select a strong, responsible man. Uh, what's his name? Robert Stevens. He came to me as a young boy, started as a fur whacker, worked his way up from the bottom, as I did. Come. You want me, Mr. Astor? Yeah, yeah, come in, my boy. I want you to meet Mr. McDougall and Mr. Mackay, who are going on a trip with you. And this is Robert Stevens. I'm glad to meet you, gentlemen. You, you've been with Mr. Astor for a long time, he's told us. Well, yes, I... You're a very fortunate young man. Yes, so Mr. Astor assures me. Yeah, of course. I want you to see more of life than you can see from these windows. I want you to have some adventure while you're still young. Well, thank you, sir, but... Does adventure pay profits? <laughs> Didn't you hear that? He even thinks like me. <laughs> That's why I'm sending him to represent me. <laughs> it's just like I'm on a trip myself. No, better. Then I don't have to go to sea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll enjoy the trip, lad. Southward round the Horn and, and through the far western ocean. Aye, right on up into Oregon. A wilderness that few white men have ever seen. Aye, an excitement, laddie. Though not without a spice of danger. Indians? Ah, uh, Indians. They're uncertain creatures. Yes, so I've heard. Excuse me, sir. The voyagers have been sighted up to Hudson. Oh, you're rivermen from Canada. Now, Robert, my boy, off with you and give them welcome. Yes, sir. Uh, just a minute, lad. I'm warning you, they're big blustering men from the backwoods with no knowledge of cities. You'll have to take a firm hand with them. I think perhaps we'd best go with him, Mike. Aye. Oh, no, sir. I hope to be able to handle them. Yes. Amen. Amen. What's all the excitement, boys? It's the voyagers! Not voyagers, boy eyes years. They shoot rapids. They paddle all the way from Canada. Canada? Lakes, rivers, and everything. <laughs> Which one of you was the leader? I am, monsieur, me, Ovidi Montigny, and you are Mr. Astor, no? No, no, my name is Stevens, but Mr. Astor requested me to extend you a very hearty welcome in his name. He was too busy to come. He was too busy to welcome us. We come all the way from Canada, a pirog. Mr. Astor's a very important man, but not too important to think of your comfort. He wanted me to advance you some expense money, but since you seem so offended... Oh, no, monsieur, I'm not offended. I may be a little hurt. I also thought I might be able to help you find some suitable lodging. Oh, this is very kind of you, monsieur. Eh, uh, about the pirogue? Well, that will be loaded on the Tonquin. That's the boat on which we're going to sail. Ah, oui. Eh, Baptiste, how the pirogues to the bar? Then follow me. Très bien, oui. Eh, very good. Monsieur, we are in your hands. Right this way. So many beautiful girls, and I'm built so sharp. Yes, well, perhaps they'll never know. But tonight you will take me to show me the music and the gaiety and the girls, eh? Oh, I'm afraid I wouldn't be of much help to you. I'm... I will not take you. I don't go like this. I've been putting for things like you, girl. I'm gonna like this New York. Hey, Roussel, come back here. <laughs> Fair and fancy free, young and charming, and he was bold as a man would be. Why alarming? He kissed her once, kissed her twice. She sighed, oh, very nice. He
Training, her voice wouldn't be bad. Her voice? I was not listening, I was looking. You can get music from a bird, but when a woman is as beautiful as that, is enough. <laughs> hey, you would introduce me to her, I'm a friend. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't know her. You don't know her? Well, then I go know her and introduce you. friends at that table. Give them anything they want. And make sure they get back safely to Mrs. Murray's boarding house on Bleecker Street. You understand? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Oh, Julie, I have a... How many times have I told you to knock before coming in here? But, but, but I, I did knock. Well, what do you want? I'm in a hurry. I have a gentleman out here who wants to meet you. You can tell him for me. I don't want to meet him. But you haven't seen him. Why do you act like this? What do you think I pay you for? I'm beginning to wonder. Mm, to please my patrons, that's what. I sing to please your patrons. Oh, now, Julie, be reasonable. This is a foreign gentleman, a stranger, and very important. They're all very important, and very fat, old, and bald. Aha, but I am not fat or old. I am very young, very strong, and uh, beautiful. You see? Merci bien, monsieur. Bonsoir. Mademoiselle, tonight you were wonderful. When I hear you sing, I say to myself, ha ah, ah, if Paris could hear you just once, she would be at your feet. But really, I can't You're so you... lovely, you're so fascinating. And your voice, ha oh, oh, ha, he's like um, an Oriol, so pure, uh, passionate. You're extremely enthusiastic, aren't you? Uh, Mademoiselle, all of France would be mad about you after one look, as I am. Oh, oh, I am so sorry. I am too impulsive. Uh, maybe it's because I'm French. You certainly are impulsive. That is the only way. Quick, you get dressed, and we have dinner together, we drink wine, and you sing to me a song under the moon until she goes down. Eh? Oh, please, Miss Julie. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be much else I can do. Eh, hey, bravo! What should you wear? This dress? <laughs> oh, ha, ha, this is not a dress. Ah, this one. <laughs> 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 Three hundred and twenty kegs. Seems a lot of gunpowder for a trading expedition. You've never been in the Indian country, sir. We might need that and more, too. Yes, I suppose so. Indians are uncertain creatures. Well, thank you, Mr. Mumford. Yes, sir. Ah, thank you, Mr. Fox. Everything in order, Mr. Stevens? Yes, yes, quite in order. That is, if we have enough gunpowder. Hoi there, Mr. Stevens. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. McDougall, Mr. Mackay, this is Mr. Fox, our first mate. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. Captain Thorne is assigned to the port cabin. I've had your luggage stowed there. Oh, it's very kind. I hope it's on the steady side of the ship. <laughs> We've not yet had the pleasure of meeting Captain Thorne. Well, you'll have to face it sooner or later. Might as well get it over with. He's, uh, he's in his cabin. Come, gentlemen, and uh, step softly. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Captain. What is it, Mr. Stevens? Well, I'd like to introduce Mr. McDougall and Mr. Mackay. Mr. Astor's partners. This is Captain Thorne of the United States Navy. Glad to meet you, Captain Thorne. We've, uh, we've heard a lot about you. That's so. Not that we take heed of all we hear. Still, Mr. Astor tells us you're one of the finest seamen afloat. As good at your job as we are at ours. Aye. Well, gentlemen, we won't question the first part of your statement, but the second part you'll have to prove. Eh? 
You see, in the past, I've always picked the men under me. But this time, Mr. Astor feels... Men under you, you say? Well, if I'm to be in charge of this expedition, naturally, everybody will come under my orders. What's that? Your orders? Well, that's aboard the ship, gentlemen. Also ashore when it concerns the ship, Mr. Stevens. But uh, Mr. Astor made it quite clear. Once we get ashore in Oregon, we're to be in charge of the fur trading and river expeditions. Aye, and the building of the fort. Well, gentlemen, we'll be a long time aboard this ship, and we can discuss those matters later. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm writing a letter to my wife. I always do that on the eve of sailing. Here, there's your cabin, gentlemen. And, Mr. Stevens, if I hear her right, there's more of your passengers on deck that need your attention. Oh, yes, of course. Bonsoir, Monsieur Stevens. Where's Mortini? Didn't he come with you? No, Monsieur. Well, why not? Where is he? Monsieur, say la femme. What was that? <laughs> Find the woman, Monsieur. She is that Julie Morgan, that uh, little singer in the American Garden. Remember? <laughs> like I told you before. Come, we have a drink. Ah, they will be mad for you in Paris. We must make arrangements, eh? Oh, yes, Ovid, we must, we must. I couldn't sleep last night just thinking about it. And all the wonderful things you told me about the life over there. Uh, oh, wait, someday I will take you back there with me. Promise? Then I can make you proud of me. And we can be together forever and ever and ever. Uh, Julie. Mm. Come. Julie et Paris. <coughs> Montigny. Ah, Monsieur Stevens, I'm glad to see you. I want you to meet Miss Julie uh, Morgan. How do you do, Miss Morgan? How do you do? Oh, she is dressed like a boy because she sings like a boy. But she is not a boy. Well. You know, you ought to be on board Shetland's orders. Oh, but there's plenty of time, monsieur. You, you come have a drink with us. No, thank you. I, uh, I have a lot to do on board, and you'd better come with me. Uh, allow me to make my adieus alone. I, I promise you I will be there. I'll give you my word. Well, don't be too long about it, or they might sail without you. Miss Morgan? Bonsoir! Oh, Reed. You're not... You're not really sailing tonight. Ah, oui, Julie, I must go. My family in Paris and sister are returned. But why didn't you tell me? Ah, you see, that is why. You were upset. When we spend so many beautiful hours together, I do not want to leave you with a tear in your eye. Ah, but soon I will come back to you. Take me with you. Don't you understand? I feel if you go without me, I'll never see you again. Ah, but Julie, it cannot be. The port is so small. If it were not for the influence of my family, I, I could not get passage myself. Please, you could arrange it if you wish. I want to be with you, Reed. I'd go with you anywhere. There's nobody to care. I have no one but you. Please. Mr. Fox, stand by to cast off. Stand by your stern line. Captain Thorne. I'm Mr. sorry. Mr. Stevens. This is your first voyage, is it not? Yes, Captain. Well, you might as well learn now as later no one comes on this quarter deck without first asking permission. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain, but I had to tell you, we can't sail yet. The leader of the voyagers is not on Mr. board. Mr. Stevens. Sir. As we go along, you'll get to know me as a man who has two gods. One of them you may be acquainted with. The other, I'm sure, is a stranger to you. It's called discipline. I'm sailing no matter who isn't on board. 
Let go of the ball line! As Mr. Astor's representative, Mr. I Mr. Stevens. To... Let's understand each other. Mr. Astor is the biggest man I know, on shore. But at sea, I'm bigger than Mr. Astor. Now get off my quarter deck. Ah, bonsoir, monsieur. You was look for me? Well, no, I wasn't. You know was look for me? But the captain was. He wants to see you at once on the quarter deck. Ah, merci bien. Ah, capitaine, you was look for me? What are you doing on my quarter deck? Now get off! Good morning, sir. You're an early riser. Well, I haven't been to bed yet. I thought I'd wait until the sea quiets down a bit. Why, that's as quiet as it'll ever be, sir. Is it? You just lay out flat in your bunk, and you'll soon get used to the roll of the ship. Shall I? Yeah. And try whistling. That helps. The whistling? Yes, sir. You'll see. In a couple of days, you'll be running up that rigging for exercise. Mr. Mumford, you're an optimist. <laughs> Mr. Mumford! Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. You getting out of hearing, Mr. Mumford? No, sir. Eight bells struck three minutes ago, and you just came on deck. Well, I'm sorry, sir. That's all. Yes, sir. Mr. Montini's going to pay my passage. Montini? He brought you aboard? Why, yes. He said everything would be all right as soon as we're away from land. And we are away now. We certainly are. So far away, I don't know how we're going to get you back on shore. Oh, but I don't want to go ashore. Please. Not until we get to France. France? Yes. I'm going to sing there. Ovid's going to arrange it through his family in Paris. But this ship isn't going to France. We're on a fur trading expedition to Oregon. Oregon? On a two-year voyage. And you're the only woman on board. Oh, but... Ovi oh, couldn't have made such a mistake. He certainly couldn't. You mean he... I mean Ovid's never been to Paris. He's a Canadian river man. He's quartered out there now between decks with the rest of the men. What we've got to do is get you off this ship before it's too late. Oh, no, no. I've got to think. Mr. Stevens. Please. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Stevens. I've got to get a couple of charts, sir. Oh, Captain, just a moment. Oh, yes, yes, sir. I'm sorry we had a quarter you here in the chart room, but since we must, why, I... When I came in here... What's this? Mr. Stevens, what's this? Yes. A stowaway, huh? But I... Well, before you're through with this voyage, you'll wish you'd never seen a ship. Now get forward. But, Captain, listen. You be signed on as cabin boy. You'll break your back over every dirty job we can find for you. Do you understand? You don't understand. She came aboard thinking She? That... Yes. A woman. Mr. Stevens. What blasphemy is this, bringing this woman of yours aboard a decent ship among God-fearing men? Me? Why, I don't even know the girl. Silence! But he had nothing to do with Silence it. Silence the two of you. Trying to turn my ship into a waterfront. I tell you, you're wrong. Miss Morgan came aboard expecting... Oh, it's Miss Morgan, is it? 
And you had nothing to do with it. You don't even know the girl. Well, I'll have none of your lies, sir. Well, you might listen to what they have to say. Listen to some concocted story fixed up between the two of them? No. The facts speak for themselves. All right, all right. I brought her aboard, then. Now you can turn back and put her ashore, can't you? Turn back? Aye. Uh, why not? If it offends your moral principle so much to have her on board. Turn back and forget my sense of duty to Mr. Astor? Why, with this offshore wind, I'd lose three days. Well, what's three days? Mr. Fox! Mr. Fox! Yes, sir? Pipe all hands aft. Very good, sir. Mr. Mumford, clear the lower deck. All hands aft. Aye, aye. Come on, step up. Step up, lad. All present, sir. Now listen to me, every man here. Mark my words and mark them well. This jade and boy's clothes, this, this Jezebel, has been smuggled aboard this ship by Mr. Stevens here. That's a lie. Well, if she thinks she's going to have a pleasant time aboard this ship, she's made a mistake. Because before this voyage is over, I'm going to wet every charm out of her body. She came aboard as a boy, and as a boy, she'll stay. And understand me now. If any man aboard this ship so much as speaks to her, save in the line of duty, I'll have him triced up and flogged 50 lashes. And that includes you, Mr. Stevens. Maybe you think it's not within my power to flog a passenger. But one violation, and I'll take the power. Now, you get back to the chart room. You'll be quartered there for the voyage. You bully. You can't Get below. Since you've always been so concerned about the rivermen, you can get your dunnage out of the chart room and take it forward tween decks to where they're quartered. Yes. Adventure? I... I'm sorry I got you into so much trouble. I'm sorry for you. I wish I could have helped you. Oh, but you can. Ovi, why wasn't he there? You must find him and bring him to me. He's got to explain this. You heard what Captain Thorn said. Fifty lashes for any man seen speaking to you. And don't think he doesn't mean it. On this ship, he's almighty. He told me so himself. And I'm beginning to believe it. You should be ashamed of yourself to bring a little girl aboard a ship. And such a girl too, eh? Oh, 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 oh. Ah, but I'm very comfortable here. I said, get up. Ah, so you want to fight with me, huh? Ah, but I do not want to fight with you. Well, I can see it's going to happen sooner or later. So we might as well get it over with. <laughs> Mr. Stevens. For a quiet man, you seem to have a mighty lot of cussedness in your get-up. Always looking for trouble. If there's any more of this fighting, I'll have you both triced up and flogged. You understand? Now get below. Just jump 
Christian. That was four bells, gentlemen. Well, what of it, man? When we're at the game of chess, Captain, we do not like to be disturbed. If I remember rightly, I told you we were sailing under naval rules. All lights out by four bells. But we're not part of the crew. That's right. I'd clash your more as ballast. Nevertheless, you'll obey orders. What fool regulations are these? Putting out the lights at 10 o'clock? If the regulations are good enough for the United States Navy, they'll suit the Tonquin while I'm in command. Just a minute. Well, please, the black heart, the scurvy of man. Hold your tongue. Why was it? Looking for some water. The water barrel's for it. Ah. Merci. <laughs> Merci bien, François. Shh. Oui, François. Bon nuit. Bon nuit. you finished cleaning up? Oh, I had finished. What's I was that you're just... hiding behind your back? Oh, just this picture. I hadn't to notice it and thought there'd be no harm in looking at it. After this, just do your work and go. I don't want you poking about among my things. Oh, I wasn't poking about. Get on I with only... your other duties. Drinking that's very precious. You could use salt water. Oh, thank you. Hey, tie that to your bucket. Just heave it overside. Oh. Overside? Yeah, over the rail, overboard. Oh, thank you. Let me help you, Julie. Get away from me. 
I hate you. Oh, sir Temper, you do not let me explain. Explain what? All your lies? <laughs> you are beautiful like that. Paris, sing. All France to be at my feet. And look at me. Oh, you are angry with poor Ovid. Angry? I could kill you. Ha <laughs> ha! Then you do love me. Love you? You lying braggart! You Well, last spy. night I tried to come down to explain to you. Afraid of being flogged? I am afraid of nothing. I risk anything to be with you. I tell you. Julie, down there tonight. When the little bell she go tingling eight times, I will meet you there, eh? Not tonight or any other night. Eh, hey, Julie. Monsieur le Capitaine. Don't let him see you. Get away. Oh, no. I shall kiss you, and he shall have me flogged. Oh, no, you fool. Let me go. Then you meet me tonight? No, never. All right, yes. Only go. Promise? I promise. in there. I know. Why don't you go on deck and get some air? Oh, thank you. I will. And try whistling. Oh, thank you. Take your time, Sandy. I'm, I'm only halfway through the book. Oh. Julie, I knew you would come. I wasn't going to. Why did you love me? Well, what else could I do? When first I saw you, I like you so much, I must meet you. And maybe you turn up your nose at that poor voyager, huh? But you let me come on this boat without telling me. Oh, but Julie, you said you want to come. You say you go any place with me. I know that's true. I did say that, but why didn't you help me with the captain? Help you with what? Ah, there was no danger. The captain, he spout like a whale. He's jailed in boys' clothing. This Jezebel, she shall be a cabin boy. <laughs> Did he give you a beautiful cabin all for yourself? <laughs> oh, Julie, this is no night to find. The water is so beautiful in the moonlight. In the moon, she said, Ah, Julie, you give Ovid one big kiss because you wait for so long, huh? Well, good night, gentlemen. Good night, Robert. Good night, good night. And uh, don't be hasty, Mr. Mackay. <laughs> Boy, she's not feeling well. Went on deck for a little air. Well, if you see her, would you mind telling her to bring me some hot water and spice? And get 50 lashes? You have my permission to speak to her. On this occasion only. Thank you. <laughs> hot rum toddy, eh? Julie. Stop it, Ovid. Stop it. Julie, come up from there. The captain wants you. Oh, let the captain wait. No, no, you fool. Let me go. Boy, where's that boy? <coughs> Man overboard. Man overboard. How to leave. Watch on deck, man braces. She was sitting on the rail. Your yelling frightened her so she fell overboard. That's what comes of bringing a woman aboard. Why, I ought to... Keep your wheel hard over. Hard over, sir. 
By the murdering blackguard! I believe for a minute he was tempted to leave the lass out there. I've been telling you that fellow had sacrificed his own mother. The scoundrel! Ah, you're safe in my arms, <laughs> Julie. Get her below to her cabin. From now on, I'll keep her under lock and key at night. Mr. Fox, get us back in our course. Aye, sir. Lively, lads. Brace up. The heartless brute. He did not ask if she was dead or alive. some hot grog. You ought to drink it as soon as you can. Oh, be... Oh, he's safe on board. There's nothing to worry about. Yeah, drink this now. He wasn't hurt? No. I know I shouldn't care the way he's treated me, but... You must think I'm an awful fool, Mr. Stevens. Yes, under the circumstances, I think you are, Jim. Your clothes ought to be dry by morning. I'll go along now. You better try to get some sleep. Wait. You've been very kind to me from the first. Why have you? Why not? Good night. Excuse me. All present for punishment, sir. Very well, Mr. Fox. All present, Mr. Mumford. All present, please. Seaman Brown. I believe you heard me say that anyone accosting the girl on board would be punished? Yes, sir. Seaman Brown, when you made advances to the girl, were you encouraged by her? No, sir. She did everything she could to avoid her. You know, Brown, it's a, it's a mighty weak man who can't withstand temptation. But I've got to have discipline aboard this ship if I have to beat the necessary willpower into every man on board. All right, Bosun, 50 lashes. 50 lashes it is, sir. And lay on with a will, Mr. Mumford. Inspired the Scots to fight, laddie. 
I fight like demons. I don't wonder. Mr. McDougal! Would you oblige me by stopping that infernal noise? Would you deny me the right to practice the sweet music of Scotland? Sweet music? Wild barbaric savages may think so, but to me it sounds like the caterwauling of a, of a thousand alley cats. Huh. Well, a man with no appreciation of music can't have a soul. Ah, uh, you'll see a different order of things once we get to Oregon. We'll be in charge then. Want me, sir? Why isn't this cabin made up? I ordered all cleaning done by me. What are you doing in those clothes? Why shouldn't I wear them? They're mine. I said you'd serve as cabin boy. And I'll have no cabin boy in skirts. Then you'll have no cabin boy. I'm sick of men's clothes. I'm a woman and I'm going to dress like one. Go take off those clothes. I won't. I said, go take off those clothes. I tell you, I won't. If you want them off, you'll have to tear them off. Get out. Get out of my sight. You'll have to eat cold porridge, laddie. Aye, naval regulations. Captain, how long will you be stopping at these islands? All of today, with every able-bodied man available to help. That's fine. It gives a chance to go ashore and do a bit of shooting. Aye, and maybe find some penguin eggs. That is, unless the captain has a mind to put us to work hauling water casks. I said every able-bodied man. Captain, may I go ashore? Of course not. They can't have the men interfered with when they're working. Well, she could go ashore with us. I mean, in our boat. Uh-huh. It would do the lassie good to get the feel of the earth under her feet again. Uh, we'd be glad to take her. No trouble at all. Of course not. No trouble for you, maybe, but it may mean trouble to me. Not if we accept the responsibility. No, no that's so. Please, Captain. Very well. You may go ashore, but see that you remain within sight of the ship at all times. Oh, yes, sir. And you'll return on the first boat bringing water. Oh, well, thank you, Captain. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mr. McDougall. Thank you, Mr. Thank McDougall. You, thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Come, lads, we, we best be seeing your fowling pieces. Oh, lad, I've got a fine one I can lend you if you're careful with it. Well, I'll be careful. Hey, <laughs> good lad. Come along, Sammy. Ready for anchorage, sir? Very well, Mr. Fox. When the last cask of water is aboard, I'll be firing a warning gun. I'd advise you to be aboard within 15 minutes. I'll wait for no one. Don't worry, Captain. We wouldn't deprive ourselves of the pleasure of your amiable company. Uh, we're good to now, I want no trouble with you, remember. You're to stay inside of the ship at all times and return on the first boat carrying water. Understand? <laughs> yes, I understand, and I'll cause you no trouble, I promise. And thank you, Mr. Stevens. Come along, 
I should have done. You should have moved your queen instead of your bishop. I did move my queen. You moved your bishop, I'm telling you. Uh, fine shot, Sonny. You're burnt. You no feeling well, Mac? Well, I never felt better in my life. I thought you couldn't have feel so well not taking credit for the shot. Oh, well, shooting's like chess. You sometimes have to encourage a novice. That's a fine shot. A great shot, Sonny. Why are you run for me, huh? Oh, I don't know. Because I felt like it. Oh, it's wonderful of thee to feel the earth and to smell it. The grass and flowers. I didn't know I missed them so much. I am here too, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like that because you have the love of life like I have. Your eyes, they sparkle in your blood. She sing, huh? Yes. Because we're young, perhaps. Yeah, we have too little time to run and to laugh and to love. Soon we get old and then... Voila, we sit down. Yes. That's how it is. What is it, Julie? You're so serious. I was wondering, what's ahead for us? Oregon! When we get there, we make a big fort. And Le Petit Maison. What are they, Ovi? Um, like you say, um, houses, homes. Homes? And I will build a big one for us. You mean, we'll marry? Mary? Isn't that what you meant? But how can we, Julie? There's a wilderness. There's no police there. There's the captain. The captain? A captain can marry people. Go to him, Ovi. Tell him everything. Then we can always be together. But, Julie, we are happy as we are. Are we? Why do we want to change things? Maybe it's because I've changed. Hey, Julie, what do you mean? All oh, this is so different from the way I thought it was going to be. I'd hoped for so much more from you. Respect, understanding, protection. But you can't give me those things, can you? They're not in you to give, are they? Oh, but Julie... Oh, you didn't care what the captain did to me. You don't even care what'll happen to me when this voyage is over. You make me feel cheap. Ashamed for having loved you. For ever having believed in you for a minute. Hey, where's Julie? You'll be glad to know, Captain, we had a fine shoot. Plenty of game. Clear the gangway. Oh, just a minute. We've got a present for you. We had you in mind when. when we shot this. What of your responsibility? Where's the girl? Lassie? Isn't she on board? Didn't she come back with the first boat? She did not. Mr. Mumford, tell them what happened to her. Well, she was running up the trail with that Frenchman following her the last time I saw her, but that was early in the day, sir. You see? Well, we'd better go back. Shall I take a search party and look for her, sir? No. They heard my orders the same as the rest of you. Mr. Fox. Yes, sir. Make ready to sail. But Captain Thorne. You 
can't mean you're going to sail without them. Mr. Fox, you heard my orders. Carry them out. Aye, sir. Make ready to sail. It's plain murder. That's what it is. <laughs> Let her go. Soon there will be another ship stop here, maybe. Another ship may not come here for months, years. But what does it matter? It is very nice here. A fish in the sea, birds in the trees, animals on the ground for a bit of trap, and nobody to tell me what to do. Ah, Julie, we could be happy here. I can never be happy with you. Anywhere. I know that now. <laughs> Stop jabbering, man. Speak English. You say, you say we can't leave Ovi. He is our, how you say, leader. Leave. Well, what can we do, man? He's in command. Well, we can't just stand here doing nothing. You're off a point. Off a point, sir. Captain, I beg you to lay to and send a boat back for those two people on the island. Steady. Steady, sir. Captain Thorne. I'm sorry to use force, but unless you give orders to lay to, I'll blow a hole through you. Mr. Stevens, do you realize what you're doing? Do you understand what you'll have to answer for? Yes, I understand. to send a boat ashore. Why, I said, lively lads, man the lee braces. Ease your helm down. I didn't want to do that, but you left no other course open to me. Mr. Mumford, since Mr. Stevens has no quarters, you'll confine him in the brig for the rest of the voyage. Yes, sir. You'll have plenty of time there, Mr. Stevens, to ponder on the penalty for mutiny. You'll not be denying the attempt to maroon the lass. Aye, how will you explain that, Captain? The court will decide as to whether or not I was within my rights. Mr. Fox, get underway. Very good, sir. Square away. And lively, lad. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Stevens, it was all my fault. I, I'm... That's quite all right. Come along, Mr. Mumford. Some of God's creatures are well fed aboard this starvation ship. Aye. Well, come on, Mac. What's the way to up, Chess? No, no, I'm not in the mood. Why not? I miss seeing young Stevens about. Aye. And the lassie as well. Aye, so very depressing. Uh, you know that young looks awful like Thornton? Aye. Sounds like him too. You're three minutes late, Mr. Monk. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. How are you? Well, I could do with my razor. I think it's safe to give it to me since I can't get at the captain's throat. <laughs> well, I'll see that you get it, sir. I'm going to leave that lantern with you. Thanks. Is there any startling news aboard tonight? Oh, yes, there is that, sir. We signed on ten new members. Ten new members? <laughs> Many of the sows that Mr. McDougal shipped. Last night, she gave birth to ten of the finest little grunters I ever drugged me eye over. <laughs> well, extend my felicitations. <laughs> yes, sir, I will, sir. 
Uh, Miss Julie, sir. Captain Thorne still keeps her locked in her cabin, and she worries about you. Whenever I take her food to her, she wants to know how you feel and, and how you look. And she takes your troubles quite to heart, sir. Well, you tell her to stop worrying. Yes, sir. And uh, keep an eye on her, will you, Mumford? I mean... Uh, I understand, sir. And that, monsieur, is the truth. I bring Julie aboard. She tells me on the island that she wants to marry with me. So, if you marry us, I promise you, she'll give you no more trouble. If she told you that on the island, why didn't she come to me at once and ask to be married? Why, I have to think, monsieur. A marriage is very serious. Oh. You weren't anxious to marry her then, and, and if you could get her now without marrying her, you wouldn't consider it, is that right? Are we? Well, there'll be no convenient, sacrilegious, hypocritical marrying on my ship. Marriage is a holy and beautiful thing. The spirit enters into it as well as the body. Monsieur seems very upset. You uh, feel for Julie, eh? Maybe more than you let yourself understand. Come out here. This man tells me you want to marry him. Is that your wish? No. I did think so at first, but now... I told him I could never be happy with him. Anywhere. You've changed your mind since you've come aboard, is that it? Yes, I've changed my mind. Ah, but you leave! You had your answer. Now get for it. I'm thinking from now on, you better keep this. Boats are ready, sir. Now remember, Mr. Fox, when we go ashore, keep a sharp lookout. Yes, sir. See to your guns. There may be treachery. In India... Come on, son, the lad. I'm with you, Mike. <laughs> That'll be all, Mr. Fox. Yes, sir. You going ashore like that? Ah? Uh, why not? Why, you look as uncivilized as those savages. Would you be teaching us how to trade with Indians? Uh, maybe he'll learn how to do that in the Navy, too. Uh -huh. What's that? Eh, well, that's a pig. A pig? Uh-huh. One of Minnie's bairns. Oh, what? Oh, you learn in good time. Captain, about Mr. Stevens, you're setting him free as he said you do. Mr. Mumford. Yes, sir. Follow me. Yes, sir. He'll do it. I'm not so sure about that. He's kind of... Mr. Stevens, Mr. McDougal and Mr. Mackay seem to think it's important to Mr. Astor's interest that they have you ashore with them. So I'm releasing you. But I'm warning you. What do you mean by that? Once you get ashore, you better remain there. Don't board this ship for the return voyage, or you'll face a trial for mutiny. Captain Thorne, I didn't want to come on this expedition in the first place, but I'm here. And when the ship sails for the return voyage, I'll be aboard. Ah, 
Robert Laddie. Well, great to see you again. I, that must have been an awful experience. Well, at least I was spared the sight and sound of our jovial skipper. <laughs> Judy. Oh, Mr. Stevens, I'm so glad you're free. I was afraid for you down there in the dark. Now, well, I told you not to worry. Anyway, we'll all be a lot happier ashore. Oh, but I'm not going ashore. No. The captain thinks it's too dangerous. Well, perhaps for once he's right. Your body, stand by. Come on, Sandy. From now on, we're in charge. All right. Smoke, Sammy. Well, there are boots somewhere. Come on, lads. Look to your priming, lads. None of that. What they need now is a show of force. I'll bring them out to parley. You're not on your quarterdeck now. We're in charge here. Telecom. That's other Sandy. Aye. Peace! We are friends, we... we trade. Lamazi, speak English. What you want? Tell the chief we friends. We come in peace, want, want trade. No peace. Thunderstick. Tell your men to put down their guns. You think I'm mad? Well, I can't make a noise. Well, that's good. You, big chief. Me, big chief. Micah, potlash, Micah. I like the watch, Micah. Sunday. Pig. Aye. Good, good. Muck, muck. Very good. Oh, Close, muck, muck. Muck, muck. Muck, muck. muck. Now, the Turkan. Weak, really, peace, psycho, muck, muck, go, 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 go. You want it? You want it? It's yours. Oh, pote. You can it. Knife. Knife. He wants them, Mike. I give them to him. What? It means success. If you come daft, you'll have these pipes over my dead body. But it means good trading, you can. I give them to him. I'll get him to lend them back to you. Mr. Cook. Must see, Mike, tell him. Mike, I'll pass it to Mike, who cook. You see, my success? Ah, uh, you can get back to your ship now, Captain. It's all settled. We trade. <laughs> Thank you. 
How's everything going ashore, sir? Trading good? Good. We've been here two months now, and all we got to show for it is a hundred mangy pelts. By the rate they're going, we'll be here two years. Sorry, yeah, that's it. Where's the girl? Uh, in the main cabin, I believe, sir. All right, stand by. What have you got there? What are you doing? Trying to keep these rags from falling apart. Well, you can throw them overboard and save your mending cotton. What is it? Indian clothes, but better than what you've got there. Why, they're beautiful, and I do need them. I don't know how to thank you. There's no call to thank me. I'm only concerned that you're decently clad and kept warm. Oh, by the way, they're sending an expedition into the interior. Stevens, Mackay, and that Frenchman are going, so from now on you can live in one of their huts. You mean I can live ashore? That's what I said. Oh, thank you. Victor Maketiki. Go go close. Hello, hello. Close. 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 Oh, Lassie, it's great to see you again. Thank you, Mr. McDougall. I'm leaving her here, in your care, if she can have the hut Mr. Stevens is vacating. No, no, she can have Mackay's here in the fort. It's much safer. Oh, then Mr. Stevens' hut is outside the fort? Aye, uh, through the gateway yonder, Lassie. He's busy packing up his duds, if you should be wanting to see him. <laughs> oh, thank you. Captain, you'll be glad to know we'll soon be shipping aboard another hundred pelts. Well, in that case, I'll be able to sail my ship home before I'm too old to navigate. Blanket? Blank? Blanket. Blank it. That's fine. Me speak English. Blanket. Knife. Shirt. Coat. How much? Too much. All right? <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, take canoe. Canoe? Julie. I didn't think you were allowed off the ship. I was given special permission by the captain himself. Well, how did that all come about? I don't know, really. He simply said from now on I could live ashore, and he gave me these clothes. Well, isn't that generous of the old rascal? They suit you, too, the clothes, I mean. This trip you're going on, will it be dangerous? Of course not. Anyway, we're going very well armed. Oh, you will be careful, won't you? If anything should happen to you, Surely, I... Surely, nothing's going to happen to me. Pardon, I am very sorry. Hey, La Julie, you are very good to fool. You like a little butterfly. You flick from here to there. Stop it. I'm sure you do not like the truth, huh? I said stop it. Uh, you are different from me. Me, I like one woman. <laughs> so the woods, they make you strong, eh, monsieur? <laughs> Come on, get up. Touché, monsieur. The leg, I... I think she broke. What's all this about? Why, get up, man. Go on, get up, laddie. I am sorry, monsieur, but my leg. You'll do no traveling for a while with this leg, I'm thinking. Oh. Then the expedition must wait. Wait, man, we can't wait. We've got to get into the back country in a way before the snow falls. Oh, then you must go without a feed. And uh, I must stay here and wait in the sun. And everybody must be very kind to me. Bear a hand now. Here, laddie. Uh, uh, goodbye, Mac. Well, goodbye, Sandy, and, and God be with you. Come along, Matuna. You go there. You go there. Julie. Julie. Oh, now, now. Please, don't. Not after what Ovid said. But he was talking about somebody else, not you. That's true, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's true. It's true, but... Oh. 
<laughs> now look here. While I'm gone, you take good care of yourself. You know, you've got a habit of getting in a lot of trouble. What is it? I meant for you to live ashore. I know, Captain, but I'll feel safer here with you. Please. I'll save you a coffee. to spare, will you take a look at those pelts? Aye. They're fine quality. How did you come by them, if I may ask? Lamazy brought them from his tribe. I got them for a handful of nails. So? Where is your tribe? North. Two days. Clayco tribe. Much furs like this. Tell them to come down here. I'll, I'll make good trade. Oh, no. Too far. You come. Bring Thunderbird. Thunderbird? No, no, no. The ship stays here. Is it because you're more comfortable here? The time you're wasting is of no importance? Of course it's important, but I'm not so daft as to sail away and, and abandon the fort. Well, stay here, then. I'll go without Just you. a minute. You can't split up the party. I won't have it. You've already split it up by sending Mackay off to heaven's knows where. Well, what if trouble starts and the Tonquin's not here? Why should you worry? You've made friends with the Indians. Well, at least wait until another of Mr. Astor's ships arrives. Now you can take Mackay with you. Perhaps I'll do better without him. Aye, and perhaps you'll land yourself in plenty of trouble. I'll have more skins in one round of ship's bells than you'll have in a month, you blundering, thick-headed ox. Come, Lamothy. You have a gun. I, I... <laughs> The first load of skins for you. Compliments of Sandy McKay. Uh, it's great to have you back, but where is Sandy and the others? Building a new fort. I wouldn't be here now, but we're almost out of trade goods. Fine. How is that old Sassanac Mackay? He's well and busy. Matuna, tell him to unload. Load, hurry up, quick. Well, the lads learn fast. Where's the Tonquin? Aye, where is the Tonquin? We weren't trading fast enough to please Thorn. He had to try his own hand at the business. What? Where? 
200 miles north, the Clayco tribe. Lamazee persuaded him. Lamazee? Aye. No. Thunderbird, no go. Lamazee, bad medicine. He hate white people. What? When you come here, Lamazee want chief kill you. Still trade goods. One time, other Thunderbird come. Go north, Lamazee's tribe. No see no more. Quick or catch. Kill. Kill. The ignorant fool. Jeopardizing the whole expedition. Julie. Julie? What about her? She is aboard. Well, they must be warned. But how? They've been gone too long. We can't possibly catch them. Where this place, Thunderbird, go? Ah. Uh, here, Ford. Here, Thunderbird, go. Here, Quaco tribe. Can't we go overland? Portage, get there first. No, 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 that's impossible. Nothing is impossible, monsieur. All my life I live in the woods, in the canoe. I know how to travel very quick. All right, you go with me. Matuna, get food, water. We start now. Come along, we'll unload. Lend a hand. Plenty of time. They've got to be warned, I tell you. Come on.
This one. Four nails. Four Give it to me, sir. Look at that, Mr. Fox. Four nails. That's the way to trade. Four nails. to drift well astern. But why? There's no time to explain. Do as I say. Hey, Mr. Steele, how long me? Julie Piercher. Captain Thorne. What are you doing here? I Listen, told... don't argue. What is this, Mr. Stevens? More of your skullduggery? Look for yourself. Form your own conclusions. Fox, yes, sir. I said no more than six aboard at one time. You've let them overrun the whole ship. Now clear the decks. Come on, that, man. I'm afraid it's about finished. Yeah. Minnie, huh? Monsieur Mumford, Fox. Yes, all. Oh, come along. We've got to get you to the canoe. Oh, no, monsieur. Please. I stay here. Here, let me help you. Merci, monsieur. Once, my little fellow. My holy sister gave me this. She wanted to make me proud to go to church. But I say, only I wear it, monsieur. Why not, huh? That's right. Monsieur, hold it for me, please. Merci, Pierre. You're a very nice fellow. I give you my word. Mr. Mumford. Yes, sir. You hurt bad? My back sure can't move much bigger. Huh? What are the others? The girl. Stevens got in the canoe when he came aboard. She won't get away, though. Not if those red devils sight her. 
Not so much we can do, sir. Is the gunpowder? Would you blow up your own ship, sir? Would you mind, Mr. Mumford? It might give the girl a chance. You know who? <laughs> maybe you're right, sir. I'll need your knife. Good luck, sir. Thank you, lad. Yes, of course. Look, they've seen us. 